Okay, everybody, are you ready to get this party started? Let's go, come on. We have Baile Folklorico y Mariachi Lobos de LCL in high school. The Baile Folklorico instructor, Charlotte Name, and Mariachi music director, Efrain Nava. Everyone, un aplauso, un aplauso, let's go. We'll, we'll make it work for now. Uh, that was Las Mañanitas, which is a traditional tune that we often hear at birthdays, at birthdays and people's uh, patron saint days and any festival occasion to welcome people, to wake them up in their bed and, and bring them good cheer and good nature. So our next, perf our next performing group will be our lovely, Maria our lovely ballet folclorico. This is called La Bruja.
Vale folklorico de LCL in high school. Next, we're going to be bringing out Chema, who's our singer. And we apologize for the microphone technical difficulty that we're going to just keep pushing forward through with. And this next selection is a selection written by one of Mexico's most famous composers of all time, Jose Alfredo Jimenez, who, again, uh, had a long-lasting career and, of course, wrote so many beautiful tunes and melodies that are still, to this day, transcending time. And so we're going to feature Chema and the rest of our mariachi. And, again, uh, this song was also made popular by... Uh, one of our most recent uh, iconic Mexican male singers, Vicente Fernandez. So, El Rey. que llorar dirás que no me quisiste pero vas a estar muy triste y así te me vas a quedar con dinero y sin dinero yo hago siempre lo que quiero y mi palabra es la ley no tengo trono ni reina, ni nadie que me comprenda, pero sigo siendo el rey. Una piedra en el camino me enseñó que mi destino era rodar y rodar, rodar y rodar, rodar y rodar. También me dijo un arriero que no hay que llegar primero, pero hay que saber llegar. Con dinero y sin dinero, yo hago siempre lo que quiero. Y mi palabra es la ley. No tengo trono ni reina, ni nadie que me comprenda, pero sigo siendo el rey. You're staying here. You got another one. <laughs> we discovered Chema. Sometimes when you just think like, oh, yeah, yeah, we're running the class, and then one of the kids comes and is like, oh, this guy sings. I'm like, where have you been all semester? So we literally <laughs> discovered him like at the beginning of the semester. So we're really proud of his progress. The next song, made by also uh, famous by uh, Vicente Fernandez, uh, it will be Hermoso Cariño, which means lovely, sweetness, lovely, dear, lovely, all that good love stuff, you know. Hermoso cariño, hermoso cariño, que Dios me ha mandado a ser destinado no más para mí. Precioso regalo, precioso regalo, del cielo ha llegado y que me ha colmado de dicha y amor hermoso cariño hermoso cariño ya estoy como un niño con nuevo juguete contento y feliz 
no puedo evitarlo y quiero gritarlo hermoso cariño que Dios me ha mandado no más para mí Hermoso cariño, hermoso cariño, ya estoy como un niño, con nuevo juguete, contento y feliz. No puedo evitarlo y quiero gritarlo, hermoso cariño que Dios me ha mandado, no más para mí. Next, we're going to be hearing, uh, seeing our folklorico perform again one of the standard uh, Mexican anthems of all time in this in this genre, the dance that they're doing, which is folklorico, and this is the jarabe tapatío, jarabe tapatío. If we could please start from the top. Thank you very much. Alan High School and their instructor is Miss Charlotte Name 
right back there in the center, Miss Name, can you please wave to this lovely audience? These kids work really hard. They meet after school. Our mariachi is actually a class, and it meets every Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. Folklorico meets every Wednesday after school, and they, and they really work hard. And sometimes a lot of the kids come in at lunch, during brunch break. They are really devoted and dedicated. So thank you, Ms. Name, and thank you, students. And now we're going to do another song, bless you. Another song by uh, the son of Vicente Fernandez that he made famous back in the early 2000s, Alejandro Fernandez, and this is called uh, Como Quien Pierde Una Estrella, and please pardon my singing, but I'll do my best. So here we go. <laughs> Te quiero, lo digo como un lamento, como un quejido que el viento se lleva por donde quiera. Te quiero, qué pena verte perdido, como quien pierde una estrella. Se van infinito. Ay, ay, quiero que se oiga mi llanto, como me dolió perderte después de quererte tanto. Ay, después de quererla tanto, Diosito, dame consuelo para sacarme de adentro esto que me está matando. Ay, 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 ay. Te quiero, lo digo como un lamento, como un quejido que el viento se lleva por donde quiera. Te quiero, qué pena verte perdido, como quien pierde una estrella. Se va al infinito. Ay, ay, quiero que se oiga mi llanto, como me dolió perderte después de quererte tanto. Ay, después de quererla tanto, Diosito, dame consuelo para sacarme de adentro esto que me está matando. Ay, 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 viene. Te quiero. bringing up one of our stars, rising stars. Uh, some of you might have read about her in the Press Democrat. Uh, and again, she's one of the main reasons why we're here tonight. 
this is Vanessa Dominguez Sanchez, who started our Folklorico Club at L.C. Allen last year. And again, she basically is the choreographer, along with Ms. Name, and directs her peers and what they're doing with the Ballet Folklorico. So she's going to be coming and singing, because she's also an amazing singer. So you're in for a real treat. Song uh, by Juan Gabriel, written for Rocio Durcal, who was, a, a, was still a lot around. And it's a lament song about her losing her little boy, and, and, and it was a tragic story. But the song commemorates basically anyone who's had a loss, and it's very popular. So this is called Amor Eterno, which is eternal love, featuring our amazing Vanessa. Tú eres la tristeza y de mis ojos que lloran en silencio por tu amor. Me miro en el espejo y veo mi rostro, el tiempo que he sufrido por tu adiós. Obligo a que te olvide el pensamiento. dormido que despierto de tanto que me duele que no estés como quisiera que tú vivieras que tus ojitos jamás se hubieran cerrado nunca y esta Amor eterno e inolvidable, tarde o temprano estaré contigo para seguir amándonos. Yo he sufrido tanto por tu ausencia Desde este día hasta hoy no soy feliz Aunque tengo tranquila mi conciencia Sé que pude haber yo hecho más por ti Oscura soledad estoy viviendo La misma soledad de tu sepulcro el amor del cual yo tengo el más triste recuerdo de Acapulco como quisiera que tú vivieras que tus ojitos jamás se hubieran cerrado nunca y estar mirándolos amor eterno e inolvidable tarde o temprano estaré contigo para seguir amándonos
Muchas gracias. You know, as a teacher, I mean, like, there's so many things that we can be proud of, but this is one of those shining moments. So thank you, Vanessa. Ms. Name, I'm so glad we share her. <laughs> She's also a member of the Luther Burbank uh, Center for the Arts Mariachi uh, and, and Folklorico. So she's just all up and down Santa Rosa, just, you know, doing her thing. So we're so proud of her. And again, she deserves this credit. So thank you again, Vanessa. We are going to close our program now. Uh, just again, thank you for this opportunity. Gracias por la oportunidad. Somos Mariachi Lobos and Ballet Folklorico de El Cielan High School. Uh, if you'd like to donate, if you like what you see tonight, please, 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 please write a board member a letter or an email or something. Let them know that you like what you saw so that they can continue seeing and believing in what we're doing with our students. And again, they deserve it, don't you think? Thank you. And of course, we're always taking donations because nothing runs on fumes. Just like the car runs on gas, we don't run on just fumes. We, we do need the, the financial support, and you guys have been amazing. And um, some of you have already contributed to our cause, so thank you, thank you from the bottom of our hearts. Uh, but the need is still strong. Uh, you know, we're winging it right now with these moños and all black, but we want some real trajes, some real charro suits for, for our kids to perform in. So that's one cause. And our marching band that's teaming up with CCLA is also going to be marching in, uh, in, again, the Luther Burbank Rose Parade coming up in May. They're getting new uniforms. We're also uh, still raising money for that. So if you'd like to donate, you like what you saw, you can send your donations to El Cienal High School. Uh, I think we have a flyer or something out there that Lucien is providing for you all. And if not, you can just, you know where to find me, El Cienal High School. Just ask for Nava, the guy, you know, that runs the noise department. So, you know. <laughs> Thank you so much again. Muchísimas gracias por la oportunidad. And we are going to close off with our combined number. Vale Folclorico and Mariachi Lobos doing uh, Los Machetes. Thank you again for this opportunity. Gracias.
How we doing, everybody? How we doing? Okay, this is a transition, let me tell you. So you gotta bear with me. And you know how we do it when Nico shows up at a Los Cien event. I need some booties up, because we gotta get this energy going for this youth perspective. I need five minutes. Everybody get out of your seats, bump some music, and let's get jamming. How do Latinos gather when we gather? Let's do Are we on? Can we hear me? We got one, baby. I'll do, listen, I don't need a lot. I just need this one. We are setting up our sound right now, but we're gonna get the moods and vibe right. And they said, Nico, can you just get out there and like mix and mingle with the audience? And I was like, say no more. Um, so I have my one woman show and you're about to see it. Uh, no, my friends, welcome in. This is Los Yen's Youth Perspectives. Are we excited to be here tonight? Yes. This is what I'll say, ooh. Never run before I talk. I always do not learn this lesson. My friends, I invite you to come on down. These are reserved seats for Kim's and Creative. I don't have friends. So you can come on down to those seats right there. The, the thing is, is I do have seats in front of Sko, who is the premier sponsor. So please sit in front of Sko. You know what I'm saying? Come on in, my friends. Come on in, join the front. I will say this, we do do dance battles halfway through this, and my first call on ones are the ones in the back row. So if you'd like to evaluate your decisions now, have at it. If not, I see you. I see, no, I see you. I see you, and I know you wore some sneakers too. Yes, come on in. Come on in, flood in the front. We want to make our youth feel supported, loved, inspired. I need some shiny veneers in the front row. So if you got them, come on down, baby. Bring that little pantsuit you wore today, looking all cute. Yes, come on, give it up for the Muslim woman. Yes, Lupe, yes, come on, friends, let's go. We need to make our youth feel supported, loved, and that we're not scared of them, even though I'm a little scared. Because listen, they organized all the, y'all, they organized this themselves, y'all, okay? Can we just say the youth for president, let's go. And I'm not gonna say that, yes, this is Youth Perspectives, and yes, I'm speaking, but it seems relevant, it seems relevant. Get a good skincare routine, and the youth will ask you to speak, okay? Drink water, say your prayers, and um, here we are. Um, 
It is my pleasure to be here tonight. I was asked by the Youth Advisory Council of Los Cien to come and help co-facilitate. And our job here tonight as the audience is to create that container where emergence can happen, right? Where we can support, uplift, and reflect the love that our youth are gonna share with us here today. We have some community agreements that we are gonna shout out for one another, but I just wanna look around and I wanna set an intention with this audience tonight that we are here to learn, we're not here to interject, right? We are here to be supportive, we are here to applaud, we are here to snap, we are here to say amen, and we are here to show up to not take from, but to support and have ourselves change throughout this process here tonight. Yes? Yes. yes. And that means showing up with a generous spirit, smiling faces, kind eyes, and a spirit ready to learn. Yes? yes. And to shake to some daddy Yankee when I say so, Beatle. I mean, that's my gig, that's my vibe. How are we doing on sound, y'all? Are we doing on, we doing good? Keep going? Do my show? Try my show on each mic. You don't even know what you signed up for. <laughs> yeah, this one, is this one on? Can I get a, yeah, okay. Hello, hello, hello. Dual sit tones on this, dual sit tones. Okay. Check, check, check on here, this one. Cleavage. Okay, thank you. Are we good? Yeah. Let's do it. My friends. I gotta get off the stage because I'm too old now. But it is my joy, it is my privilege, it is my honor to bring to the stage Los Cien's Youth Ambassador Interns. Give it up, a big round of applause. Let's go. I got you, come on out. I got you. We're waiting, we're posing. And I'm gonna tell you about those youth interns. And I'm going to tell it through this music. Yeah! Yes, now we're about to get Come on, you turn. Get on out here. Get on out here. Big round of applause. Let's go. Yeah. Take a bow. Take a bow. Take a bow. Take a bow. Give it up. Hey, y'all. What's up? <laughs> so, good evening. And first of all, can y'all hear me? Yeah. Perf, okay. Good evening and welcome. Buenos dias y bienvenidos. Thank you for joining us for tonight's program, The Youth Perspective, where Sonoma County youth will share their observations, experiences, and concerns covering topics such as school safety, cultural representation, and student well being. But before we begin, we have a very important announcement to make in Spanish. Buenas tardes y bienvenidos. Si necesita traducción, tenemos audífonos en donde se puede escuchar toda la conversación. Traducida por Betsy Chavez. Por favor, vayan a la mesa de registración con Ellen y ella les puede ayudar con los audífonos. Muchísimas gracias a Betsy por su ayuda y por estar con nosotros esta tarde. We would like to do our acknowledgement, land acknowledgement, and we ask you, out of respect, to please stand. Today, Lucien, Sonoma County is humbled to bring us together on lands of Southern Pomo, Miwok, and Wapo people. We celebrate the active work of their descendants to preserve and nourish their indigenous culture and identity. We acknowledge the Southern Pomo, Miwok, and Wapo people as the traditional stewards and custodians of this region. We honor with gratitude the land itself, all of its ancestors past, present, and future. Los Cien respects the enduring relationship that exists between today's Southern Pomo, Miwok, and Wapo people and their traditional territories. Y'all may sit now, if you please. You guys comfortable? Yes. Perf. Today's program could not have been possible without our design team, who we would like to recognize. They're in the wings right now, but I'll say their names. Jaden Gregorio, Lydia Naidelin, Mercedes Arenas, 
Alexandra Mendoza, Mariana Weiniger, Christian Mojica, Caritina Manuel, Jonathan Sayago, Montserrat Morales, and Elizabeth Reyes Amador. They have put so many hours sharing their experiences and creating this program. Please give them a round of applause. All right, and I would also like to make a quick brief announcement. If there are still any students that didn't get a chance to get tacos from Tlaco, they are still serving tacos for you guys and will remain there until you all are able to receive some food. Yes, and thank you for Tlaco, to Tlaco for providing the free tacos to our students. Thank you. <laughs> and we also want to take this time to welcome any students that are here in the audience. We have students all over um, from Sonoma County, including Annalee High School, LC Allen, Healdsburg High Schools, Rosen University Prep, Santa Rosa Junior College, CHOPS Teen Club, and first gen with Corazon Hillsburg. So please stand if you're here in the audience and we would like to really acknowledge you. Thank you. We also want to welcome our community engagers and parent orgs. If you are a parent or a part of a community organization that is part of our access ticket program, please stand so we can welcome you as well. Now we would like to recognize our elected officials and elected representatives. We have a ton in the room today, and due to the time, we ask that you please stand and let's give them a nice round of applause. We would also like to point out our little looping slideshow to make sure you all know who our premier partners are and sustaining members. Without their investments, their trusts, we would not be able to do, to do what we do. So thank you so much, and another round of applause for them. And thank you to our sponsors for tonight's program, Sonoma County Office of, of Education as presenting sponsors, and Kim's and Creative as our access sponsor. We greatly appreciate your support. Last reminder, all of our programs and informative events are being recorded by the Nexo Media team. This is exciting because it will allow us to share with this with our 3,000 followers and members so everyone has an opportunity to listen to the conversations. Shout out to the Nexo Media team. Good evening, everyone, and thank you so much for being present today. My name is Leah Contreras, and I am currently a senior attending Annalee High School in Sebastopol. I am proud to be a co-chair of the Youth Perspective program this year, and have had the honor and privilege of working as one of Locien's Youth Ambassador interns. I started working with Locien in October of last year, and have been supported tremendously by the Locien team, which I would like to thank. So thank you to Herman, Magali, Pandi, and Ellen for the amazing support and resources you have provided. When planning, when planning the youth perspective, I was excited at the opportunity to uplift youth voice, but also worried that myself and the design team wouldn't be able to accurately present the youth voice as a whole. However, you are all in for a real treat tonight. This design team has done an amazing job at collaborating with each other, showing up for every meeting, understanding each member's perspective, and uplifting each other's voices. Words truly cannot express how grateful I am 
for the opportunity to help create this program alongside this desi talented design team. I want to take this opportunity and remind everyone that this program was 100% student-led and the outcome was greater than we could have ever imagined. Lastly, I would like to thank everyone here today whom without this event would not have been possible. We cannot do what we do without community partners like all of you here today. This allows us to create a welcoming and informational environment to eliminate barriers, provide access for our Sonoma County youth, students, and community organizers. Being able to see our visions and voice our ideas to life has been such a great way to continue to empower and foster a more inclusive, equitable, and vibrant community. Thank you. Welcome to our second year of the Youth Perspective. How are we tonight? <laughs> My name is Leslie Garcia. I am a senior from Hillsburg High School. I am one of the three interns with Lucien. I would like to welcome each and every one of you and thank you for being part of tonight. Tonight is especially important for us youth who have been working these past few months on recognizing personal experiences and common themes at our schools. Your support and pres presence also allows us youth to grow and thrive in youth voices. Developing the panel has been a process. Our activities have helped us acquire the ability to cooperate with others for the benefit of all. A good attitude and a respect for the rights of others is essential to us for success in life. Success in life is largely the result of a sound education and willingness to work. With lack of effort, we accomplish little. And unless our effort is directed by intelligent thinking, we accomplish nothing. We are eternally grateful to all our supporters we have received from the Los Cien team, this year's design team, and Nico Kimson for being our moderator tonight. We were able to have a great outreach than the year before. We are honored to have students from Petaluma High School, Elsie Allen, Casa Grande, Rosen University Prep, also known as RUP, and Sonoma Valley participating in tonight's panel. For our design team, we have students from Maria Carrillo, Annalee High School, Hillsborough High School, and Santa Rosa Junior College. I am proud to say that our design team is full of intelligent winners, achievers, and future leaders shaping our youth community. Thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is Dulce Angela Soto. Mi, nom mi nombre is Dulce Angela Soto and I am a junior at Sonoma Valley High School, as well as one of Losian's interns. Before I begin, there's two things you guys should know about me. One, I'm an avocado enthusiast, letting y'all know. And the second one, I'm shaking in my boots up here, you guys. I'm um, a little terrified. And <laughs> Thanks, y'all. That brings my confidence up. Thanks. Today, we're gonna to be talking about the youth experiences. And I really want to emphasize that experiences is plural. There is no exact particular way in, with, in which youth experience life. Each student is gonna bring a distinct and occasionally opposing perspective. Today is all about these differences, which we hope will spark conversation. In these past two months, I was given the opportunity to meet over 15 students from all parts of the county. Being a co-chair provided me with a vibrant personal view of my community as I heard different opinions and stories regarding the same topics. I've grown to understand that these stories, which make up a community's culture, are nuanced. Sonoma County is a mosaic of different experiences, reflecting a variety of sentiments that are as complicated as a person recounting them. Today is about the youth, and it's about serving the youth. And while there is so much work to be done within our school systems, I want to acknowledge and thank all the teachers of Sonoma County in California. Let's give them a round of applause. It's so often that I meet teachers who dedicate their entire lives to students, and I want to thank them all. And finally, I want to thank my parents. They put up with me and support whatever outrageous endeavor I pursue. <laughs> and with that, we want to turn the floor over to Cynthia Valdivia and Montserrat Mons Morales, who are going to present some open letters for us all. Hi everyone, 
My name is Cynthia Valdivia, and I'm the senior class president here at Windsor High School. I moved from Guanajuato, Mexico, to the United States in 2016. Sonoma County is my home, so I'm trying to make it a better place. I've always felt called to action, and I've always felt a sense of passion. When I was younger, it was the usual childlike need to get picked by your teacher as the class helper, to be the first in line, to win the games. In middle school, I joined leadership because I wanted to help plan the dances and make some decisions. When you get older, it becomes more than that. During the pandemic, like many of my peers, I felt compelled to speak out against injustice and share my views. While our arguments may not have been the most refined, we refused to remain silent spectators. I think a lot of the time I shine behind the scenes. I've been a class officer since sophomore year and it's more than just putting on events. I volunteered for different events for Senator Mike McGuire and Representative Mike Thompson. I've spoken at Spanish Parent Nights to share the awesome things we're doing here at Windsor. I'm a planner and an organizer. I'm not always the one speaking in front of people, but I run various social media accounts and I help people out when they have questions. I wanna do things right, especially when it's affecting other people. Last summer, I was selected to receive the Rotary Youth Leadership Award and attend a camp with others who have similar motivations as me. I was also selected to be a California Boys and Girls State Delegate. During my week at Sacramento, I met Leslie Garcia. Leslie and I worked together throughout the week and we quickly became friends. On one of the last days, Leslie asked me if I was interested in participating in a program she had done the previous year. She saw my interest in politics, government, and general social advocacy and thought I'd be a great fit. That's how I found out about the amazing work Dale does with teens around Sonoma County. And it's not that doing this work is always easy for me. I get nervous. Sometimes I feel like I'm not the right person for the things I'm doing. But I love doing it. I like being busy, even though it gets overwhelming, because I feel like we have such a short time to make a difference. Youth voice and advocacy are vital because they represent the future of our society. As young people, we bring fresh ideas, innovative perspectives, and boundless energy to the table. Our voices hold the power to challenge the status quo, amplify marginalized voices, and drive meaningful change. By engaging in advocacy, we not only address current issues, but also, also shape the trajectory of our collective tomorrow. When we empower youth to speak up and take action, we foster a culture of active citizenship and responsibility, ensuring a brighter and more inclusive future for generations to come. Thank you. Fear, uncertainty, hopelessness, concern. These are only a few of the feelings students of Sonoma County are experiencing at the public schools, overwhelmed by the fear of uncertainty for their futures. Violence within public schools has increasingly become worse as camp campus safety concerns are on the rise from both parents and students. The lack of transparency, representation, budget cuts, lack of academic support, lack of teacher support, decline in student performance and lack of resources are only ongoing issues in public schools of Sonoma County. This is only the tip of the iceberg of ongoing issues happening in our public schools. The American dream is slowly fading in front of our students' eyes, making a difficult path for success in higher education and into the profession of their dreams. The Sonoma County of School Districts, Sonoma Boards, and the County, Sonoma County Office of Education have failed their students of color to attain educational equity within their school campuses. The voices of our students have been ignored, dismissed, and silenced for far too long. It is time we rise to the challenge and break the deafening silence that our, holds our students captive. How much more do our students have to endure to acknowledge and be heard by the teachers, administration, and by the Sonoma County Office of Education? Our students have preserved, persevered through the adversity of issues from California wildfires in 2018 to COVID-19 to increasing violence in public schools. So why are our students' needs being met? I was once a high school student at Sonoma Valley High School I encountered a lot of support and encouragement from both my teachers and from my counselor. Budget cuts were a major problem happening in my school, resulting in, in good teachers leaving the school and, fun, and finding better paying positions. This caused a shortage on, of teachers, resulting in substitute teachers taking over and not really learning anything in those classes. There were also limited academic opportunities and support for students of color. 
High school did not prepare me for college life. Transitioning from high school to community college was extremely difficult. I had to navigate my way through community college and find resources to help me guide in my success as a student. However, I believe change can be made so, uh, can be made so another student doesn't have to go through the same challenges I did. Through collective action, we can rise together to empower students of Sonoma County to bring justice to their schools and forge a path towards student success. P providing an unwavering support of our students to reach their full potential both as a student and professional. Each one of our students has a right to an equitable education to succeed and prepare them for higher education so that they can live in a prosperous and sustainable, sustainable life and future. Valencia Clay, Sydney Chaff, and Dr. Artika R. Tainer are just some of the people that advocate for educational justice and student success. We need to follow in, follow in their footsteps and bring change to our public schools in Sonoma County and create a meaningful and inclusive learning environment for underserved and students of color. Thank you. So much Cynthia and Montserrat for you guys' open letters. We really appreciate your input and I'm pretty sure the community and audience does as well. Thank you. Now we would like to move into our racial demographic presentation that we have and this presentation follows demographics of our panelist schools Oops. and we have panelists from RUP, Petaluma High School, um, Casa Grande High School, correct? And so now we'd like to just go over this brief presentation for you all. Uh, hello, my name is Christian, and I'm going to uh, talk about Petaluma. So Petaluma High School is home to the Trojans and has over 1,300 students enrolled. As we can see, their student diversity is predominantly white with a 63% majority and has a smallest represented group of individuals with two or more races. My name is Caritina and moving on to, we have LC Allen High School, home of the Lobos. LC Allen has 1,088 students enrolled and has a majority of Hispanic students of over 84%. This school is the second most Hispanic populated of attendance. Next, we have Casa Grande High School, home of the Guachos. Casa Grande has 1,725 students enrolled, with almost 50-50 balance between Hispanic and white students. The remaining 10% average of other diversities include Black, Asian, Pacific Islanders, and Native American students. Wilson University Prep, home of the Knights, has 803 students enrolled they have the highest predominantly Hispanic population with a 95% majority. And Sonoma Valley High School, home of the Dragons, has 1,162 students enrolled with a 60% Hispanic majority, 34% white students, and 2% of two or more races. So although uh, Windsor is not part of our panel, we would still like to acknowledge the demographics as well. Windsor High School, home of the Jaguars, has 1,617 students enrolled. Their student diversity is close to between Hispanic 49% and white students 40%. Boswell has a higher percentage of students with two or more races, Black, Asian, Native American, and Pacific Islander. We decided to save the best for last, Kim's and Creative. <laughs> Kim's and Creative is led by a few of the best artists. Their why, who, and what is balanced with 30% being droid-centered, 30% artist-led, and 30% creating a community of belonging. We have the CEO, Nico Kimson, right here. Give him a, a round of applause. Okay.
Let's collaborate and make our community a place of belonging. Thank you. All right, now we are going to dive into our panel of the evening. And as we dive into our youth panel, we will have a Q&A session towards the end of the panel. So there will be a QR code. I'm not sure if it's up there yet, but if there is, there's a QR code up there. And we will be taking questions from you guys and hopefully answering them towards the end. And also throughout the panel, the questions asked to our panelists will be displayed on the screen. Without further ado, I'd like to introduce our two co-moderators for the panel, Nico Kimson and Dulce Soto. What a, cute, what a cute little slide. So cute. How we doing, y'all? We still doing good? Aren't these high schoolers magic? I think I was like eating sand in high school, so things are looking bright. <laughs> things are looking bright. Here we are. My name is Nico Kimzin. Um, as they shared, I'm an artist, a producer, a junior at Roseland University Prep. Thank you very much. I'm the founder and lead consultant at Kimzin Creative. We believe in the power of the arts to uplift, lift, and reflect the power of our community. Um, I am joined here as your co-host, moderator, bootleg um, Mario Lopez, and facilitator and co-facilitator of this panel. And everybody, welcome Dulce. Hey, y'all. Again, I'm Dulce. Again, avocado enthusiast. Get it right, y'all. Key, key. Pantsuit fan, clearly, and Gucci flip-flops lover. Get wow. it right. I am also your co-host, moderator, and vibe keeper for today. Give it up for Dulce, everybody. <laughs> yep. Peer pressure is alive and well because Dulce reached out and said, could you? And I was like, I can't say no to Dulce. She's going to be my boss one day, so I got to really impress her, okay? <laughs> my friends, we're going to have an incredible conversation here today. Here's how we're going to do it. We have some community agreements. We have asked five incredibly generous, generous panelists to come on the stage in front of all y'all. It's a little scary being on stage, right, for the first time. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to talk about discussions on uh, school safety. Cultural representation. And school reporting and what it looks like from the, the youth, youth perspective. perspective. That was rehearsed. <laughs> OK. The issue is we are going to ask our panelists, they're going to open their hearts, right, and expose their hearts to us. So I ask you, how will we receive that? Right? Let me hear you go, mmm. Yeah, moo with me. Mmm. Yeah, that's, mm, that's knowledge. Let me hear you, what? Let me hear you go, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, you can do that. What else, Dulce? What else? Let me hear y'all clap for them. Come on. Yes. So, how will we listen, reflect, and uplift the wisdom? that these youth are gonna drop on us, right? We want it to be interactive. There is not a glass wall here, my friends. They are looking at you, receive this. So we want it to be open-hearted, yes? yes? Fabulous, awesome, here we are. We are going to go over some community agreements. The first is we are gonna embrace non-finality. We're not gonna answer all the questions here, yeah? We're not gonna leave resolved. These youth might pop off on some stuff and just say, here's something that I'm gonna plant this seed for us to ruminate on later. So let's just commit to embracing non-finality, yes? yes? Yes. Next, everyone has gaps. Everybody has expertise, and not everybody knows everything. We're here to dream a collective future, you guys. Let's go, yes, yes. Next one, we're gonna speak from the I, not the they said, not the we said, right? We're gonna keep, um, other people's names out of our mouths, and we are just gonna say, I believe this, I think this. Yes? Yes. yes. Next one's me too. Wait, acronym, why am I talking? Why aren't I talking? When we get uh, asked to speak or say something, we're gonna say, wait, why am I talking? Is this for my ego? Is this because I'm really here to learn and listen? Or why am I not talking because I'm scared and I wanna encourage myself to move to the stretch zone? Yes? Yes. yes. Next is the stretch zone. We're here to learn together, and that means moving past our biases, moving past our expertise, and stretching into new possibilities. Come on, rehearse. Stretching, let's go. My friends, are we ready to get this going? 
Okay, here we go. We are moving away from transactional relationships to transformational. We are gonna leave here and we're gonna change policy because of what is being shared. We are gonna leave here and we're gonna change the way our organization moves and how we uplift and center youth voices after this is being shared. We're gonna walk away from here and we're gonna be different and be changed, yes? yes? We are forever students and we are here to learn from the wisdom and the brilliance that our students have to share with us here today. So here we go. DJ, are you ready for some introductions? We got it. First off, y'all, this better be like the Super Bowl. I've never seen one. I don't do the Super Bowl, but I imagine it's really loud. So here's what I want to say. We're going to bring up our panelists, and I need you to shout down the house when they come up. My friends, the first panelist we have to introduce is Jaden, who is a senior from Petaluma High School. You better give it up for Jaden. Come on, Jaden. Do that walk. Do that walk. Do that way. Do that way. You got it. You got it. You got it. Hit it. Amen. Let's go. Next, we want to welcome in Lexi. She's a junior from Roseland University Prep. Let's give it up. You better give it up. You give it up. And hit this. All right. Up next, we have Mariana, who's a junior at Casa Grande High School. Let's go. Give it up, my friend. Next up, we have Lydia, a junior from Petaluma High. Let's give it up. Give it up. You better give it up. Let's go. Wave to your fans. Wave to your fans. Hello. Then next up, we have Mercedes. We have the senior at Elsie Allen High School. You better give it up. get that kind of applause. What's your, where you been? Where you been? Yo, this is it. It's about to get lit, y'all. Get ready. Okay. Panelists, how we feeling? We feeling good? We about to share some wisdom? We about to speak truth? Let's do it. Let's have, let's let these, let's let these adults have it. Just kidding. Out of love and generosity. Okay, I have the first question, and this is for an all question, y'all. So whoever feels inspired, you're going to take it. I'm going to pass you the mic so you have one here too, okay? Um, the first question is, what is constantly overlooked in your school or community? What do you feel is constantly overlooked in your school and community? Who's got it first? Hello? Hello, everyone. Okay. Um, so as simple as it sounds, I think that something overlooked in my community is simply just student voice. I think that we are still struggling to bridge the gap of communication between our students and our staff. Um, and I think that I really, I really appreciate events like this where students get to talk to faculty and higher administrations and staff because I think it really gives us a chance to really speak on what we really feel. Um, and I think that we do need more programs like this um, and more student rep representation so that we can actually speak on the issues that we feel so strongly about. Hi. Um, what is constantly overlooked, at least in my community of Roseland, um, honestly, us as a whole, um, we have a lot of minority groups there, mostly Hispanic. But our school, uh, Rosalind University Prep, is also overlooked because our population is like up in there in the 90s of Hispanic. Um, they expect us to just be dancing and doing basically nothing. But there is a lot of activism there. There's Mecha, there's Cosecha, there's, there's just a lot of students there trying to make a difference. of Casa Grande, I just think um, what, what's missing is having more students involved in the policies that are being passed. I think there's a lot on the new bell schedule, and I think it's really great that we're having more students there that pay 
And then what I think I should be involved on more of the things like reading class, and we're going to be talking more about it in depth later, but just getting overall more student representation in like the school board instead of just having like one student per school, I think we should be having more students per school. My friends, real quick, who else here, raise your hand if you feel like student representation is a huge item of importance for you in decision-making process? Yes, we love to see it reflected. Let's continue on, panelists. Um, hi, I'm Lydia. I go to Petaluma High School, and I was also going to say something that's really overlooked in my school is looking at education from a student's perspective and not so much as an administrative point. Um, bringing up where Mariana mentioned, we had a meeting about our um, dismissal time and our bell schedule, and I feel like the school did a good job trying to include student voices, but they were more focused on getting in their instructional minutes, um, what qualifies under the rules of the California Board of Education, and they weren't really focused about what students wanted, about how many classes we wanted, the workload, the content that is presented to us in classrooms. I feel like they should really, um, I get it, it's helpful that they're holding these meetings to hear our perspective, but really follow through. Hello, okay. I'm Mercedes, I go to Elsie Allen High School. And <laughs> oh, I got in the back. <laughs> I wanted to say that something that's overlooked is honestly our whole school as a whole, because we have a bad reputation, but that is not true. We're proud students. We're, most of us are Hispanic, some of us are from different races and mix. So I feel like student representation is something that's really important. And the fact that we shouldn't be overlooked just because of the past and we can look on towards the future. And that could first start off with good student and teacher communication. The next, quest next question is for both Lexi and Mariana, but we're gonna start off with Mariana. And the question is, have you ever felt mistreated or told that you would not have been able to succeed by a teacher faculty member on campus? And if yes or not, do you believe that you would be able to bring awareness to this issue or do you feel unsupported by your school's administration? I'm gonna let you all tackle that however you want. Uh, well, this is a really big, this is a really um, large issue that I've seen uh, on campuses. Um, I have not been personally felt mistreated um, um, at school, but I have heard many students stating that teachers or counselors have discouraged them to go after a certain career, or that they won't. Um, <laughs> Hello, does that work? Okay. <laughs> okay. So. Um, while I have not personally been mistreated on campuses, I have heard from many students or some of my friends who stated that counselors or teachers have told them they might not be able to succeed in a career they're going after. Um, this isn't just at high school. This um, was also, I heard, at the JC where someone uh, wanted to go into the biology field, but just because they weren't white, they were told that that wasn't a field that would be able to support them. And I just thought, that counselors are supposed to be there to support us and to tell us how we can succeed in the career that we want to go into. And I don't think that it's fair for us to feel, feel put down by the administrators that are put there to support us in the first place. And I think that especially the fact that people of color are disproportionately affected by this is not fair and should be looked into more deeply. And I'm gonna give a different perspective. Um, unfortunately, I have been a victim of this. Um, when I was in my district, um, the Rosen School District, I had a teacher tell me that I wasn't gonna do anything in life. Um, <laughs> and it was really hard because there was only a few Hispanic students, so I already felt excluded. And all my teachers were white. <laughs> it was hard. Yeah, can we give it up for that bravery? Yeah. 
I'm just gonna say, this is how change happens, right? When we choose to share of ourselves something that is deeply personal for us so that others can learn from that experience. Has anybody else here also had an experience where a teacher discounted them, didn't believe in them, that they felt that they weren't supported? Yeah, yeah, that's not good, right? So we're here to change that. Let's change that here tonight. My friends, we are moving on to our next question. This is for Lexi, Jaden, and Mariana. Here's the question. Do you feel comfortable enough to report situations involving conflicts and discrimination to an adult on campus? Do you believe other students also feel that they can do this, that they can report these conflicts? Jaden, may I start with you, friend? All right, so for this question, I'm gonna speak as part of the queer community of my school. So unfortunately, my junior year, I um, had an incident where it was just an extreme case of homophobia and I was spat on, I was, called, I was verbally assaulted, I was pushed to the ground. Um, and it, I reported that and I didn't get a response for that incident for nearly three months and I didn't get justice for my situation. So I feel very strongly about this topic. Um, and I think that because that cases like mine, um, especially cases of homophobia, don't get resolved like this, it discourages from other students feeling comfortable to report their own issues to administration when we see time and time again that these reports aren't being brought to justice. As a student, I represent, I'm a student board member for PCS, um, and this is something that I've been working on a lot. Um, I think that something that we've been trying to work on is getting administration to reform their administrative processes when, um, when handling unresolved student reports. Um, with me, I was never followed through with, with my report, um, and even though they couldn't find the perpetrator, I would have expected a follow-up or a check-in, and that's something that I'm trying to advocate for, um, for other students that are experiencing the same thing as me. Yes. For me personally, I don't feel comfortable um, talking about my problems with adults in my school. Uh, typically, faculty tends to look for blame instead of actually um, get, getting the problem solved. And unfortunately, this has caused the environment to get really bad, especially with my school being fairly small. I feel like there has to be a level of trust and just help. Um, I agree. I agree with both of you because I feel like it's 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 very uncomfortable to report conflicts that are happening on campuses. I remember I heard a story about someone on campus that was sexually assaulted, and they had DNA evidence and everything. They came to the they came to the faculty and no one on campus had really done anything about it. Um, they still had to share a class with, with the person who did it. And all teachers could say or do when we talked about this in a school setting was um, there's nothing you can do about it legally unless you get a restraining order and obviously that can be very traumatic. And I just think that there's better ways that we should be able to deal with these issues. And also I've heard about many other issues like just today my friends and I were talking about how we feel less comfortable reporting on people that do good in their sport fields because coaches will protect them and the school wants to get recognition through sports and I think that's something that should also be thought of like more deeply thought about and talked about because I don't think anyone thinks about how there's a lot of issues that go on through people through on campuses and that just being protected just because you're good at a sport doesn't give you more rights than anyone else on campus. <laughs> Y'all thought they were coming to play. We are not here to play. And can I just say, Jaden on the line down, it is hard being a student, right? It is hard coming up against oppression, those moments. You are celebrated here. You are loved here. You are cherished here. So thank you. Once again, thank y'all for that. And this next question goes out to Lydia. 
Is there something in your school that you believe should be changed, added, or moved? And if so, why? Um, something I feel should be added and changed in my school is the climate of support for students. Um, I think adults really underestimate how challenging high school really is. I mean, one year you're in middle school, you know, life's kind of easy, and then suddenly you have to worry about maintaining a certain GPA, holding down a job, getting good grades, um, researching colleges and how you're gonna pay for it. Um, I feel as if the school doesn't, at least for my school, you don't, we don't really have like a climate of support. Um, we don't have like a wellness center or enough therapists. No one to really guide you and talk to you about. And I think our school would really benefit from having more support for the students. All right, we are moving on. How we doing, y'all? Are we feeling this? Are we changing? Yeah, let's keep doing it. All right, my friends, we are moving on. This is for you, Lexi and Jaden. We're gonna talk about student reporting. What are some challenges that you think your community face? What are some challenges that you think your community faces? Yeah, so I think that certain demographics in my school and in my county are very disproportionately affected. Um, for example, our students with disabilities and our English learners, they are, they do not get enough support for their needs. Um, if you look at the graduation rates, the disparity between students with disabilities and English learners is far different than from other demographics. And I, as a student board member, I've gotten complaints from English learners that they are not comprehending the material that they are given because it's simply just translated and not um, told to them one-on-one. -on -one. And they need that comprehension to actually fully understand and comprehend material. Um, this is an inequity issue. Um, we need to provide more support for these students um, because they're currently not getting the resources that they need. Um, at our school, we face a lot of racial adversity. Um, even when we're out at sports, I'm an athlete. I'm in three different sports. In all three different sports, I have dealt with the same thing. We go to different schools. Um, predominantly white or whatever they may be, but we've gone to schools where they, where they have said slurs to us, thrown things at us, and our faculty members don't really care because they don't want to be sidetracked from leagues. Um, and I honestly think it's so unfair because you have students being cornered by other students from other schools and they just don't want to help. Before we go on to the next question, I just want to commend these amazing panelists. They're calling out. They're calling out societal norms and racial oppression as well, as Lexi Megan has stated. And you guys, this is gonna be the nerd side of me coming out for just a minute, but I pause. But there's this quote from Angela Davis that says, in a racist society, it's not enough to be not racist you must actively be anti-racist. So, let's give it up. And the next one is for Ms. Sidis and Lydia, which is, how can school faculty better support or uplift the brilliance of our multilingual speakers that are English learners? I'll repeat it one more time. How can school faculty better support and uplift the brilliance of our multilingual learners that are English that are English learners. Mercedes, you want to hit this one first? Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. So um, obviously at LC Allen we have a lot of teachers that put up the effort of learning Spanish and trying to communicate with their Spanish students. I have an English teacher, I won't say names, but he's um, he speaks French and is learning Spanish. And we have some new students from Haiti whose first language is obviously French. And he helps them, he even translates the work for them. He helps them find resources in their native language to be able to do good in school. And that just changed my mind entirely because I remember 
experiencing and like putting put with the students that couldn't speak English that well and having to translate for them because the teachers didn't want to put up the effort. And they would sometimes interrupt me when I was translating and trying to help my friends do their work. Also, from the Press Democrat on March 21st at Oak Grove Union School District, they fired seven employees, which included a translator that helped parents fill out forms and communicate with the school on their behalf. And they said that it felt like um, even though there were other uh, teachers that spoke Spanish, it didn't feel like they were being, they were felt like they were being talked to, not communicated to. And it felt like they were just being robbed of a way to be in their students' edu in their kids' educational life, to give them a better life. And they just fired that person, which I do not think is fair. And I think that they should just stop firing instructors that obviously speak another language. And that sh Kids have the right to be educated, even if it isn't in English. You can't just take away something that's theirs. So in my high school, I think that to better support English learners, we could really benefit from having teachers or hiring professionals to translate and directly teach students about the material that is taught in class because as a former English learner, before I knew this language, it was really hard to learn um, anything because teachers would throw a packet at you with like a lot of material and it was just translated. And I don't know if you guys have ever tried to like translate a formal document, but the translations kind of suck and there are words you don't use every day. So it was really hard because you handed this really fat packet of the unit and the information and it's like the incentive to teach your students isn't there. So I think teachers should really put in more effort into trying to translate and make it more personalized to the student. Um, another idea I also thought about was having community college students who specialize in languages come in and tutor these kids during class because I feel like it benefits both of you one, the high school students get to have more personalized education and the community college students get to interact one-on-one, -on -one, practice um, the language they're learning. I think it would be a really good program to have in the schools. Can I just tell you, when Dulce reached out, I was like, hey, do you want to help co-moderate? And I was like, sure, fine. Can I just see the list of questions the panelists has decided that they're going to speak on? And I was like, oh, it's those questions? Let go. <laughs> this, you are all brilliant. So thank you. Thank you. And Dulce said, I'm out. Forget this fool. Here we are. This is up for Mercedes and Jaden. Do you know what to do in non-natural, meaning school violence related situations to keep yourself and others safe? If not, how do you think schools could improve? I'm gonna ask that again for us in the back over here. Do you know what to do in non-natural, meaning student violence related situations to keep yourself and others safe? And if not, how do you think schools could improve? Yeah, so I mean, our generation faces, it's like we're literally the generation of like school shootings, it's so bad. Um, and I just, it's so nerve wracking to think about what to do in that situation and I still don't feel like properly prepared that I'm gonna know what to do when the situation occurs. Um, I think that's something that we could do to improve that preparedness is I don't think that my high school does nearly enough drills um, to practice for this. And then also something that we have continually struggled on is the communication on our telling students and families like that threats are even happening. Um, I remember this one incident, we had a student fight on campus happening and on the loudspeaker, the person just said, go back to your first period class like without any explanation. And obviously this is gonna cause like ruckus around all the students. We were all so scared. We were like, what is happening right now? And it's like, we would have known, we, I wish we were more prepared for that situation. It didn't end up being that serious, but I wish that we had like code words or code phrases that would signify a shelter in place versus a lockdown. Um, I think that we just need more drills um, and more education on how to deal with these cases. I wanted to 
say that some schools, um, not only mine, but I realize that a lot of other schools don't do drills because of COVID and they're scared of just um, catching the disease or any other new disease ever again. But what about the safety of the students now of a what if situation? Like, like over at Montgomery, hearing that was terrifying, especially hearing my second period teacher cry because she was terrified of what would happen to one of us. And I honestly think that we should think about the fact that when things like this would happen, a lot of students won't listen to those drills or those rules, and they would decide to either fight or, their, or to flee on their own. They have their own survival instincts that will override the ones that um, teachers and different instructors teach them. I remember uh, my anatomy teacher, she was telling us about uh, what to do and like weapons if we needed it, if anything like this ever happened. And the only thing that I ever thought was what about the teacher, what about the other students, what about my siblings that go to the other school across the street from me? What if this person decides that teenagers are, are too smart and they're fighting and they know how to defend themselves and go for kids that are much younger, like my two younger siblings? And that is something that plagues my mind every single day because of the gun violence and the racial violence and the sexual violence that happens practically almost every day here in America. In a way, the next question builds off of that topic. In your opinion, Mariana and Lexi, do you think that SROs increase the safety that you feel on campus? In other words, should schools have a cop at all times to secure the safety of the students? Mariana, do you want to hit this one first? Um, yes, I feel, like, I feel like this issue needs to be spoken about a lot because um, every time we see someone speaking about SROs on campus, we always hear the parents' perspective, we hear the administration perspective, we hear the teacher perspective. I've spoken to many older adults about it and they, because there's been so many, like nationally, more school shootings, more school violence, when something serious happens, we think to the quicker solution, so we just think, let's put cops on campus. But let's, what about the, the longer effects of that? Um, so many studies have been shown that campuses with cops, they lessen um, school performance. They disproportionately affect people of color, students. Students get suspended for really minuscule discrepancies. Students are getting suspended for having tantrums in classrooms, not handing their phone over. And we've got to think about the long-term effects of this. Um, think about college applications. If someone has a misdemeanor or a felony, they're less likely to be, to be, to be admitted into university. And I think it's more important. Whenever I see a cop on campus, I don't feel safe. I honestly feel a little scared. I feel like, what if they catch me for something I didn't do? And then they just persecute you. And then there's also, when you think about some of the shootings that have occurred, um, like the Uvalde school shooting, there were cops there, but still a lot was not done. And I think it's important to keep that in mind. Um, coming as a Hispanic student, uh, my parents personally are immigrants. So, and 90% of the students at my school have immigrant parents. This is a really big issue with having cops on campus. Um, thankfully, our area at least is a sanctuary, so we're not really worried about um, our parents getting deported or students from other countries getting deported, but it is a huge issue. I understand the Relief <coughs> family that there are more Hispanic students with immigrant parents or immigrants themselves in other schools, so I know that would be a huge issue. Not to mention that these meetings about SROs on our campus have happened at 12 at night to make sure that students don't go, which is really, really sad because um, I'm president of Mecha at my school and we all planned on going, but they switched up the time on us last minute just to make sure that we didn't go. My friends, can we all take one big deep breath together? Go. 
and let it out. Do another one, go, and then just go, really loud, really loud and weird, yeah. Yeah, we gotta let that out, right? Yeah, what we're hearing is profound, what we're hearing is brilliance, and what we're hearing is painful, right? For those of us that show up and wanna create a community of care, of policies that care, this hurts, and it should. And I hope that you continue to listen, continue to engage, and, how, and think, how will we act differently after today? The next question that I have for us is for Lydia around cultural representation. Do you believe your school is inclusive to the diversity of the student population? And if not, how is your school not meeting the needs of their student population? Um, as a student from Petaluma High School, I feel that my school is not inclusive to the diversity that we have in our schools. And I'm sad to say it's actually the opposite. I think that a lot of the racist incidents and the s using of slurs is um, encouraged by the teachers or at least not, you're not given consequences enough for it. Um, I've seen incidents where students get into, you know, verbal fights, it happens. But when, to, for a student to go and call another student a slur and a teacher to just shrug and turn a blind eye, pretend it didn't happen, they didn't hear it, it's actually really upsetting. Um, I think a way to change that is to hold students accountable and not play favorites. I've seen, it's mostly student athletes who get away with it, but hold everyone accountable equally. Um, another way to help with the diversity in the schools is letting students become aware of the different cultures that exist, um, not to be ignorant. Um, I've seen a lot of culture fairs going around, especially this year. I think a lot of schools, from what I've heard, the students have fun doing it. Um, even the teachers have fun watching it, learning about it. I think culture, cultural fairs would really help and hosting programs that are more towards diversity, pop, student populations such as um, Mecha, um, folklorico groups, mariachi groups, more of that would really benefit our schools. This is the last question, you guys. Are you guys ready, panelists? Come on, let's give it up. Yo, we need to hear louder than that. Come on, let's give it up. I don't know, you guys, that was a little weak. We gotta do another one. <laughs> Let's give a round of applause for the final question. Come on. <laughs> this is for Lexi and Jaden. You guys can answer whoever wants to go first. And the question is, what can your school implement, programs, courses, et cetera, to improve the representation of students and staff population to ensure acceptance and inclusion? school needs to bring back Cosecha. Um, Cosecha partners with Raices Collective. Um, they represent a lot of indigenous groups in a bunch of vast cultures. Not only that, they also help you enrich your own culture and educate you in your own way. But just in general, my school is very not diverse. Um, you had mentioned about um, culture fairs. We actually have them too, but it's really sad because our school actually has to have students do it, but the difference is that our students have to beg to do it. And we get funded by GALE, another organization, which is really hard, but we'll do whatever it takes to become diverse. Yeah. <laughs> um, something I think that we can do to um, improve our representation is um, looking at our ASB classes. So at Petaluma High, we have a predominantly white school, but we do have like a lot of representation in our demographics. Um, and I am one of four students of color in my class. Um, and I think that we, like, we as a class, like really, it's really hard to try and celebrate culture in ASB. I know we try to celebrate all the cultural and history months, um, but it really takes a lot of pushing from me and the other students of color to do that. Um, and I think that ASB, considering the, we do have a lot of diversity at Helmer High, it needs to be a more diverse class. Um, these are like the leaders of our, 
of our campus, these are people that are hosting our school events. We need people that actually have, that represent all the perspectives on our campus. Um, in addition, I also think that we need to create more student groups that are directly talking with people like you, people that are in higher staff. Um, I don't think that we have nearly enough programs that where students can directly um, be part of the shared decision-making process. Um, I think I think our solution is to make like um, something we're trying to work on at Pelham High School is this thing called Trojan Student Ambassadors, and it would be a group with um, students that feel passionate about issues around um, school, um, and they would be directly working with administrations. And I think that's something that almost every school should do. And um, I think that student representation needs to be implemented, and that those student groups need to be. Um, curated with students of all different backgrounds and ethnicities and things like that, so that we accurately um, represent our campuses. Can we give it up for our incredible student panelists? Yeah, come on, get up! Will you all please to stand up as well? Stand up for us as well. A huge round of applause. My friends, we have asked you to be resilient when you shouldn't have to be resilient, right? So we appreciate you and, our, and you speaking your truth in vulnerability and courageousness. How will we move differently to remove these barriers, these obstacles, so that high schoolers can be high schoolers? How will we move differently after this? And I'll say, to move away from transactional approach to transformational, right? To not just take your brilliance, run away, think about it, but move to action. It starts with our words and how we appreciate. So here's what I would like to do. This is off the script, do say sorry about it, girl. That's how I roll. <laughs> is I'm gonna take three words, quick phrases, not monologues, I don't got the time, of encouragement to honor and uplift and to speak to these student panelists. So I'm gonna take three volunteers and you're gonna meet me down here in English or Espanol, si quieres. I'm gonna say three words of how we thank of how we honor and how we speak to our students for sharing their wisdom and their knowledge with us. Can I get the first volunteer? Who's got it? Who's brave? It's gonna be on the microphone. It's just moments of gratitude, words of gratitude. Please, Emelina, you got it. Emelina, let's go. Down here, round of applause. How we speak in truth. We got a second one here. Line up, we need one more back here. We need one more, Betty has got one back here. My friends, how we hold, uplift, and support, and speak. Emelina, go. Uh, powerful. I was very excited for my future and the future of my nieces and nephews because of your voices and what you're doing, so thank you. Keep doing what you're doing because what you're doing will support our future and those around us and we accept you for who you are today and what you will be in the future. Lo voy a decir en español. Mi primer idioma es el español. Hablo inglés, pero me siento más cómoda en mi idioma. Esta es mi identidad y eso es lo que quiero transmitir para ustedes. Que sean ustedes mismos, que no pierdan su identidad. Van a tener barreras van a tener problemas, pero si siguen siendo ustedes mismos, van a poder salir adelante. Van a tener amigos, quizás adultos, que quieran interrumpir su futuro, pero si ustedes están centrados en lo que quieren, lo pueden lograr. So sigan adelante. Gracias. For my monolingual English speakers, I'll try and just in summary honor the words that were just shared. Um, that Spanish is the uh, language that she feels most comfortable in, in which she speaks, and it's part of her identity, and encourage you 
to continue with that identity. There's gonna be a lot of barriers that are gonna come your way that are gonna try and stop you from being who you are, but to embrace it, it's part of who you are and that will make you strong and fortified moving forward. Thank you for that. Valen mucho. No son nuestro futuro, son nuestro presente. You are so worthy and valuable. You are not our future, you are our present and our leaders. My friends, one more time, a huge round of applause for our panelists here. Thank you, guys, people. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You may have a seat. We have a closing remarks for 10 more minutes, so bear with us. Woo, y'all. We feeling it today, aren't we? Yeah. This is beauty, yeah. So thank you for sticking with us. Dulce, here you go, my friend. Thank you. You guys, he did this for free. Hello? <laughs> Let's give it up, come on. Don't tell them that, don't tell them that. I'm very expensive. He's worth every penny, you guys. Every penny, trust me. And now, just to, the show's not over yet, you guys. The next one is Montserrat. Let's welcome her back to the stage so she can give you our call to action. Give it up, come on. <laughs> students of Sonoma County are calling for change within their schools to address ongoing student challenges and issues. School boards, administrators, as well as members of Sonoma County Office of Education have failed their students again and again in providing an equitable and inclusive learning environment. Students' performance and enrollment has been declining over the years as budget cuts seem to be on the rise. We can no longer ignore the problem at hand if it's not being resolved and only put, being pushed back. Putting the future of the world in our youth hands without proper education or resources will only lead to disastrous outcomes. It is time to act now and address student issues and concerns they are currently facing. Ensuring a safer campus environment for students by implementing policies or regulations that address aggression in school, whether it be bullying, cyberbullying, fights, etc. Providing students with prevention programs to reduce violent incidents happening in schools. Providing effective resources and academic support for students to better prepare them for college and reduce the number of high school dropouts. Sonoma County, high, Sonoma County Schools being more transparent with students about school school district changes and being inclusive towards hearing student voices to increase student performance and engagement. Student reports should be taken more seriously. Better mental health support from a counselor, teacher staff, or, or increasing therapy uh, resources for students of color. Change needs to happen to provide a better, more equitable environment for underserved students of color and include them into the conversation regarding their schools. Thank you. So we hope to see more cultural programs and courses for our schools to improve representation and diversity. Schools often don't provide students with these exposure opportunities, opportunities, leaving it up to students to create and host events at their own schools. We believe these opportunities are necessary to help students be more prepared for college and the world outside of high school. We also hope to see more career-focused courses in our high schools, especially the Rosen School District. This will help provide exposure to new fields and help students have a deeper look into their desired career. And lastly, I just want to acknowledge that many youth serving and youth led organizations are here today, like Las Monarcas, the Monarchs. <laughs> they are led by a group of Sonoma County youth organizers who want to bring attention to youth homelessness. They're here today, and if you want more information, their table is right outside, and give them a visit. I will be watching you guys. <laughs> and lastly, Help me welcome up the interns, you guys, yeah. from Los Angeles. Yeah. We have a little chant we want to do. So when we say what kind of power, y'all are going to say youth power. Y'all got it? Yeah. yeah. Okay. What kind of power? Youth power. What kind of power? Youth power. What kind of power? Youth power. 
We also want to thank all of you for coming to this program. I hope you take in consideration of all the experiences that were shared. And we also like to give a huge thank you to Windsor High School for letting us use their auditorium. I would like to also give a huge round of applause to our design team. There's three of them, right? I'm looking at them. That I won't, yeah, can you please stand up so we can give you a round of applause, please? so much for coming tonight. This not could, could not have been made possible without you guys. We'd like to conclude this program and have a great night. We will see you all next year. By the way, you guys, I will be seeing you next year. I'm a junior. I'll be watching out for you. Come back. <laughs>